It's getting increasingly more difficult for the Cardinals to get away from their past. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On A Z Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day, free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals, subscribe, leave a like on the video, leave a comment. Um, got a doozy for you today. Uh, this episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel Sports, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Let me lay out what's going to be discussed today. First, Steve Wilkes testified as part of the ongoing arbitration, um, Terry McDonough laid down uh, against Michael Bidwell, citing myriad things uh, that will not be discussed today. Uh, but Steve Wilkes discussed burner phones being required, passed out during Steve Wilkes' suspension, stemming from his DUI in 2018. That's going to start the podcast. Second segment. Steve Kime talked to the University of Arizona football team yesterday about talent evaluation. Chef's kiss. And then they promptly deleted the tweet of the clip of him talking about that. Final segment. What's the best case scenario for the Arizona Cardinals? I'm going to unpack. Need to unpack this first. Burners ordered by Steve Keim and Michael Bidwell to be given to Steve Wilkes and others so they can be contacted and contact Steve Keim during his suspension because of the DUI he got during the offseason of 2018. Okay, so rumblings of this in the past, now it's on the record. You know, Michael Bidwell obviously vehemently denied it initially uh, and still, you know, that's where we are. What does this mean? Could mean a couple different things. Could the Cardinals lose a draft pick? Maybe. Is it inadmissible? Maybe. What does it mean for... Michael Bidwell specifically means a lot because the constant struggle that's going to continue. And, and I've talked about this. This is your first listen to locked up Cardinals. Thank you. Um, I'll give you a quick synopsis. The growth and maturity and functionality of the Arizona Cardinals may have to be from Monte Austin Fort down. Unless Michael Bidwell can completely change the way he's done everything since becoming, you know, owner of the team after his father passed away, is that seems more far-fetched than anything. Now, the picture I paint is wedding venue with a tent during inclement weather. You've been in one, you've seen one in a movie, you know what it is. There is a wedding tent inside of State Farm Stadium. And that's Monty Austin Ford's domain. He has control to add functionality and culture and teamness, even though Michael Bidwell is the all-seeing eye in the sky. Having said that, every time Michael Bidwell does something wrong or does something out of bounds, breaks a rule, and this is a big deal. Like the, It just makes it increasingly more difficult to build a functional organization. 
They already have a tall task at hand. Adding this is just another hurdle that needs to be jumped over, circumvented in some way. The, the idea that they're going to lose a first-round pick for this, I find pretty, pretty out there, pretty far-fetched. Could be a middle rounder, maybe. They got a plenty of thirds. Losing a third or having to trade their third with Philly last year didn't, didn't do a whole lot because they gained a third when they traded back from the top of the second round with Tennessee, who wanted Will Levis. Monty Osford figured it out. And that's kind of the tug of war that we're going to be experiencing. Monty Osford swimming upstream in the river Bidwell. Yeah, that was good. Sometimes I say good things. So while this is something that is kind of a, a blast from the past, it's so prevalent. And obviously it's going to have an immediate impact in 2023 in some respect. I would assume that they would lose a draft pick. I just don't think the NFL is going to Gonna get a levy of punishment of a first rounder, especially if it's in the top five. Like it just doesn't. That punishment doesn't fit the crime, especially because the Cardinals went three and thirteen. It's not like they won a Super Bowl because they were allegedly videotaping the other team's practices or anything like that. But it's just a stark reminder. And something that could, should put a smile on people's faces in some respect, that at least he's not still here talking about Steve Kime. It just adds so... It gives perspective on what it was as of six months ago. And how incredibly different it should be moving forward. The only issue is Michael Bidwell is still, you know, he's still the owner, obviously. So these are things that Monty Osborne, Jonathan Gannon, the players on the roster are just going to have to cast a blind eye to, keep the cliched eye on the prize, and just move forward and hope that Michael Bidwell changes his stripes and understands that what he's done up until this point can't fly anymore if they ever want to win anything. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for hanging out. It's fun. So this is going to be one of my most important Steve Kime segments ever. That's a tease. Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. I love FanDuel. We love FanDuel here at Locked on. And one of the main reasons why is it's football season. Okay, get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now. New customers can, can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You got to be kidding me with that. They're just gifting you $100 off if you place one $5 bet. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. Okay, The app is easy to use and you can... You know, bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. I, you know, I just looked. The Cardinals line is still four and a half for wins in 2023. The over is plus 110. So the betting odds are taking the under of four and a half wins at FanDuel. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So get over to FanDuel now. FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Go to the YouTube channel, please. I mean, I'm not you know, 
commanding you on a Thursday. Uh, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals. Hit the subscribe button. It's only... <laughs> I've gotten some DMs from people like, how can you say that this is going to be a fun season? It is going to be an incredibly fun season. And I'm going to, let me just give you a little insight into my old, you know, my old brain here. Not only do we get football, we also get draft talk the entire season. That not enough to wet your whistle? The person who I'm going to be talking about is no longer associated with the organization. That's a win. It's going to be fun. Football is fun. Even though Denzel Washington did not think so. And remember the Titans. This is going to be a year of possibilities. Starting now, the Arizona Cardinals organization is different. Different is good. Different doesn't breed perpetual dysfunction as a dictionary definition of insanity, like the Arizona Cardinals have been. This is a new order. Is it going to take a while? Absolutely. But I much rather have this than knowing, knowing things would take a turn at the worst time. Because that's what it's always been. And that's not, like, this is not, I'm just stating facts. What's going to happen in the future, sure, it's unknown. Yeah, it's going to take a while. But it's going to be exciting. Hence, fun. Exciting equals fun. Draft talk, fun. NFL football, fun. Draft talk plus NFL football. At the same time, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Something else that's been fun is uh, witnessing the University of Arizona football team University of Arizona Sports Twitter putting out a clip from Stephen Kime. They called him Stephen. Very professional. King Sir Stephen Kime. And the clip was about how Steve Kime evaluates talent. That's like me teaching people how to get a suntan. So while that was a mistake by probably a social media, you know, person at University of Arizona who doesn't, didn't read the room right, it happens. Like this is not an attack or anything at University of Arizona at all. It's just poetic. And I wanted to take this segment to kind of reset why I talk about Steve Kime so much. Because it, it Twitter's a funny place. It can just convolute with one tweet, like, oh, you hate him, oh, you're obsessed with him, oh, whatever. No. And I feel bad for Steve Kime. Um, it's never been a personal attack. I don't, I don't know these people. Even, you know, people who are interviewing them every day don't know these people. They know the avatar that they put out. They know the, you know, the the image that they'd like to put out through the media. So my attack, quote unquote, is always on the avatar that is the GM of the Arizona Cardinals. And I'd relent if Steve Kime changed or if he acknowledged that he made mistakes, or if he would ask for help, or if he would change his ways. But the truths are, Steve Kime has chosen always his way and refused to change. Steve Kime got behind the car, on the wheel of the car, hammered. And drove and got a DUI. Steve Kime told police officers that he was the head of security for the Arizona Cardinals. Steve Kime continuously and without hiccup did things that seemed to be in his best interest and not the best interest of the organization. 
Michael Bidwell 100% enabled it. And Steve Kahn continued to do the wrong things. So when somebody does that, that's different than somebody trying a bunch of different things until you find the right thing. What Steve Kine did was egomania. What Steve Kine did was narcissism. Steve Kime has always chosen himself over the Arizona Cardinals. Whatever is needed for him to keep his job without any sort of care in the world for the future of the organization. Steve Kime kept the foundation of this team together with band-aids and super glue. Instead of pouring all new concrete and starting over. He refused to tear down. He refused to have a hard reset. Because then he would have to admit that he's wrong. Trading for DeAndre Hopkins, that was an owner-to-owner thing. That was a Bidwell to McNair thing. Steve Kahn got credit for it. What Steve Kime did through the draft is the perfect personification of Steve Kime and his inability or unwanting nature to change. And when somebody does that constantly, continuously, and without other option. It needs to be discussed every time. It needs to be. So I do. What is the best case scenario for the Arizona Cardinals in 2023? Let's discuss Locked on Cardinals, your team, every day. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk positives. Let's talk best case scenario for the Arizona Cardinals in 2023. I put this out on Twitter and I think, you know, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. We're already seeing people choosing a side of the aisle, the Caleb Williams or the Kyler Murray or the Drake. Like here's really quickly, a little hard reset here. There's no guarantee that Caleb Williams is going to be the best quarterback in 2023. People just sleep on Drake May. Now, is there a a better chance? Is he the odds-on favorite to be the number one pick? Absolutely. But we got to watch football if the Pac-12 network will let us. We've got to watch football. We've got to see for ourselves. Now, if you want to just give that, like, that's going to be the the constant. It's going to be Caleb Williams fine. Like, I'm not pushing back just to push back. It's just like, How many times? How many times? People bring up Matt Leinart all the time. Matt Leinart's a perfect example. Different, but perfect. Different, but perfect. So, the perfect case scenario for the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray, in my opinion. Kyler Murray comes back, you know, by week six or week seven. Cardinals win some games. Kyler Murray looks excellent. They choose to stay with Kyler Murray. You trade the top pick that you have, whether it be yours or Houston's, and get three plus first round picks. Three, three first round picks plus seconds plus. It'll be the greatest haul ever for the number one overall pick. It will be. I mean, it, there's no question about it. And then the Cardinals will have multiple firsts for multiple years to come with their star quarterback with a young team and with nothing but upside because they're, you can't go any further back than they are right now. And that's fine. That's what, that's what's supposed to happen when you do a hard reset. That is the best case scenario in my opinion. And the reason why is 
let's look at the other side. Okay, so say it goes awfully. Uh, Kyler Murray doesn't play. He plays like three or four games. Then they, then they shut him down for the rest of the year so he doesn't get injured because he's going to be traded. Like, let's take that. And is that a terrible alternative? No, okay? But we've seen greatness out of Kyler Murray. People want to deny that. People just want to forget that it's happened. We've seen greatness. We haven't seen Kyler Murray without Cliff Kingsbury. Okay? But say it's a, you know, Travis Shea mockery of a season and they move on from Kyler Murray. Okay, let's take that. Is that going to be good? Sure. Of course, I mean, come on. This is, it's not going to be splitting hairs. It's not going to be, you know, you know, champagne problems. It's not going to be like that because this is the future of the organization and the right decision needs to be made because this is the regime's chance. If it doesn't work, they'll be out. So say they move on from Kyler Murray and they draft Caleb, because if they move on from Kyler Murray, they're going to only have three or four wins and they'll get the first overall pick. They'll have, you know, you'll draft Caleb Williams and say, say you have the second or third pick, you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and you're off to the races. Like that, and, and then you could probably get two first rounders for Kyler, maybe one because of the cap hit, but the Cardinals are going to have to eat some of that anyways if they trade him. Like it's going to be a mess next season. Having said that, it's going to be a cap mess from here on out with Kyler Murray unless there's massive restructures, which there inevitably will be. It's all about the guaranteed money. However, you can get that cap hit down. But the worst case scenario is the Cardinals have two of the top five picks and they draft the quarterback and the wide receiver of the future, you hope. The best, best case scenario in that, though, like, I hope that they stay with Kyler Murray. I hope Kyler Murray comes back in week seven and they win seven or eight games. Because remember, with that Texans pick, the Cardinals have the car blanche to kind of just like Cardinals fans don't have to like the Cardinals have an ace up their sleeve. They've got the other first round pick. You always want your team to win. And let me explain why. Well, I mean, that's kind of obvious, but you always want your team to win because that means that you've got something much better than you thought you did. The Cardinals have, are going to have a lot of cap space next year. And this is the prove it year for the Cardinals, the prove it deal year for free agents for potential trade partners. What Monte Osifor did in the 2023 draft should give people, put your trust in Monte Osifor. After this season or after this draft, that's like, he's earned that so far. Like I, I've talked about this a lot. Like everything that's happened since the removal of the last regime has gone well because it hasn't been a step back. I'm not talking about the stuff with Michael Bidwell. That's ongoing. That's not good. Racial discrimination, just bad workplaces, that report card that came out, like all of those reports are not good, obviously. But on the football field, it's been fine. It's been steps forward. And that's what you want. So best case scenario for me, Kyler Murray balls out. They win eight or nine games. They still get a top 15 pick or something. They're not going to win eight or nine games, but like win six or seven games. Say they start 0 and 5. Kyler Murray comes back week six. They rip off, you know, five out of their next nine or something like that. That's a win. That means Kyler Murray's playing well with the wide receivers. That means Rondo Moore is healthy and Michael Wilson is playing well. And Hollywood Brown is their wide receiver one or fringe wide receiver one. Paris Johnson Jr., the offensive line's playing well. James Conner, like, that means that things as is aren't nearly as bad as it looks. And a lot of times that's the case. The defense is another story. The defense is a work in progress. Okay. That's going to take two off seasons, but the best case scenario is Kyler Murray comes back in the first handful of games. They win, you know, more than five, more than two or three games. Kyler Murray plays really well. He's reinvigorated with, with this new regime. And they, they draft highly with Houston's pick. That, in my opinion, that's the best case. And then you can trade the number one pick for three firsts and a bunch of seconds and all the players and all the world and the left picks for them forever. 
And then a bonus, a bonus, best, best, best case scenario. Like if I were to put this in a vacuum, Cardinals win six games, they get like, you know, I don't know. They get like the fourth pick or something. Okay. Maybe they win five games and they get like the fourth pick. And they get the first and the fourth pick. Houston's worst. They get the fourth pick. They keep Kyler Murray. They get the first pick. They trade a million everythings for that. A million everythings. And then there are two other quarterbacks that go 2-3. And Marvin Harrison Jr. just falls right in their lap at four. They have their quarterback for the future. They have their wide receiver one for the future. They get a million picks. And they're off to the races. Put it this way. We've talked about a lot of things. Some very not great. But just think about this until tomorrow when we talk. While this season may not seem to be impactful for the future and people just want to get through it, this is the most important season potentially in the history of the organization. This is when the new Arizona Cardinals begin. And whatever happens this season, good things are coming in the future. So going back to why I think this season is going to be fun. There it is right there. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. I'll talk to you tomorrow.